we've seen a lot of companies who have benefited greatly from big data. Um, it really started a lot with uh, companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon. These are companies that have high volumes of transactions with their customers, and those transactions are almost always online. So they have a great opportunity to collect data, and they've done so. With that data and with those interactions, they drove a lot of testing of different scenarios to really fine tune what's going to work with, the, uh, with their customers. And those techniques are the ones that uh, companies need to adopt. Now, to do that, there are some challenges, right? Not every company has all of their processes online such they can measure their customer interaction. They need to work to try to optimize as many processes online, make them uh, as efficient and clear as they can be, and they need to track what data they can measure from those online interactions. A lot of companies are measuring data for uptime and performance from a tool perspective. What I'm talking about is collecting data about the customer experience, the customer interactions, and then using that data through various analytics to tailor and optimize those interactions. It's very tricky to apply the same techniques that have worked well in a consumer-oriented business to a B2B business. Those B2B businesses are different in the sense that uh, they tend to be high-priced uh, sales interactions, relatively low volume. The sales decision tends to be made through a relationship and over many discussions rather than easily influenced with online activities. Places where we see companies are able to make an impact with big data, first one is in trying to micro-target their customers. Uh, today we create segmentations of customers in very broad ways. And that's not really the best use of big data, right? If the question you're asking big data is, what is the pr single product that all of my customers are most likely to buy? That's not, you're not going to get a very good answer because your customers are diverse. There's not one single product that they're all likely to buy. The better question is, what is the product that a single customer is most likely to buy? And then ask that question again and again for each customer. This is an example of micro-targeting or micro-segmenting your customer base through big data analysis to identify the most likely purchase that they're going to make next. They need to start with pilots that can identify specific sales challenges that they face. They need to start to build the, the infrastructure. They need to look at the skills gap that they're likely to have. Success in big data requires a diversity of skills across statistical analysis, data analysis, and business analysis, and they need to start building their uh, skills and their teams in those areas. Um, we suggest the companies you know, get started on this uh, through pilots, uh, highlighting the, the most uh, pressing needs that they have in the sales areas, and uh, focus on the use cases that would resolve those challenges. Tryon's experience with, uh, with big data uh, has involved uh, working with uh, a high-tech customer support organization. It's an area that has impacted uh, quite a bit in recent terms with, with big data, especially when companies are able to collect information from the products that they have sold out into the marketplace. Uh, the information that these products can send back is very valuable in being able to predict uh, the uh, failure rate of products and, and the customer uh, experience that they're having with their products. Uh, we've seen situations where by aggregating this data and uh, providing support tools that sit on top of this data, uh, a lot of insights can be gained that identify uh, when specific customers are going to have problems and really get ahead of those problems and improve uh, customers' experience uh, from a support perspective.